our main purpose to, has been to help um, WWF communicate the essence of what's going on here in the negotiations. Instead of using a lot of words, uh, we come with a visual approach. So it's not your boring text document. It's not just pages and pages of text. Pictures speak sometimes much better than words. And the purpose of this picture is to, within 10 minutes, give you a, a big picture of what's happening here. It's not going to be the full version. It's just going to be what five of us, together with WWF, sort of have tried to put into one picture, the highlights. We have a heating planet. There's drought, temperature rising. There's floods caused by human activities. A uh, negotiation process that's going to be in two tracks. Basically, there's a track one around long-term cooperative action, and there's a track two about further commitments to the Kyoto Protocol. We need to add uh, text and documents towards agreements and then end up with a final deal. If we get to a fab deal, we will have in 2020 potentially a better society with better technologies that actually is sustainable for not only a family here, but throughout the globe and the different parties. And that can, of course, lead to an even better future, the history leading up to this. You might want to know that it started all the way in Rio, where the international treaty was created. It moved into the Kyoto Protocol, or Kyoto, that came into the first and only binding, legally binding targets. That moved into 2007 to Bali. The Bali Action Plan was created. Now we're here with the center of attention, the main character, the deal. What you want to know is that there's those who are talking about this document and tearing it apart or adding to it. Their main players are these uh, negotiating blocks. There's the AOSIS, which is the 43 small island states. You have the African group, which are five, uh, 50 countries. Then you have G70 plus China, a huge group of 133 countries with some uh, divisions within them. There's also India in this group. Then you have the LDC, which is the least developed countries, and that's 49. Then you have the Umbrella Group. It's basically the industrialized countries. There are 10 of them, which are not part of uh, the EU. And then you have the uh, EU. So those are the building blocks, and you can see it's mechanics, like they're trying to move back and forth. So if we, we sum this up to uh, a major challenge that's a little bit divide, is that you have the Annex, annex 1 countries, which are basically the, the, the rich developed countries, and the non-Annex ones, which are everybody else. Then if we jump to the key issues that are important for WWF, seeing what, what, what's, the, what, what's the vision of WWF for these types of negotiations? Well, what's most important is we need a shared vision and adaptation, we have to create a framework for acting together. So how do we adapt to make sure that we can adjust to the climate changes that are there? And finance, we have to look at what's immediate action so that we can get immediate relief to those who are in need. And then what's the long-term long -term contribution? And we have to get that commitment already now at COP15. If this doesn't happen, if it happens, it's a fab deal. If it does not happen, we have the weak deal. And then not doing anything can do a lot the last question of this big picture is now you've described it, hopefully you get the essence. Now we hope that this big picture also will influence the president and ministers here, so hopefully they'll come up and see what will it take, what will you do to take the path towards a fab deal. But you can also, as a either citizen or mother or others, other roles, you can also reflect on that.